is this your first business? Is this the first time you guys have actually started a business? This is the first legitimate business that we, yeah. Like the Black Wolf Renaissance was the first business we went out, got an LLC, ran and everything like that. No, uh, no, well, no, oh, no, no, we no, had the, uh, <laughs> we were doing wholesaling. Yeah. We definitely had that. Yeah, so um, first legit LLC was a wholesaling company we were trying to get into real estate. Uh, it's called Southland Home Investors. And we were trying to get into real estate. And this was around the same time as us building Black Wealth Renaissance. And once again, we were, you know, adamant. We were this close to get, getting the deal. We actually ended up getting scammed out of like $3,600. Money that we really didn't have, like, that came out of our savings funds. Like, it was just, but we were, we knew the principles of, Success. We knew that if I want to be successful, one, I need to put up my own money. So I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. And I feel like us running, starting that business was kind of like the stepping stone to us actually getting Black Earth Renaissance started. Um, but as far as like first legitimate business, it would be that wholesaling company. But with Black Earth Renaissance, the way it's different, we're actually becoming businessmen because now we're actually learning what it takes to have a successful business. Mm -hmm. We're understanding that, hey, I don't want to be the person doing all of the work. I need to hire some people, people who I can outsource. I need an actual system. I need guidelines that they can follow. I need, if I'm not there, I still want my business to be working. Even, I don't care if I'm on the beach with my feet chilling. I don't care if I'm at the hospital with my mom my business should still be working. So now we're able to start thinking of things like that. But even as far as not really a first business, even when we was in college, yeah. we were still trying certain things. Um, me in school- 20, 2016 was really when it started. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the different skills with Black Wealth Renaissance, that's whenever we started acquiring them. Uh, I kind of mentioned it earlier. Whenever Jared Kelly and I, we were roommates in college, we- Started out, we were doing, I was like on Instagram, I was trying to do the influencer marketing thing. I was trying to, you know, something similar to what Black Wolf Renaissance is, build up a page, get some eyeballs, uh, get people to come look at it, uh, you know, collect collect payment for promoting different people's brands and these things and along that brand. Uh, Jared was trying to do a drop shipping store. Kelly was building out a blog. So like we were learning, when we hopped into this space, we started learning a lot of different, just digital things like how to create graphics, um, how to like make hashtags, how to really start sourcing a lot of these things. So that's where we started learning the skills and we just ended up doing a lot of the work like Jalen was talking about. Mm -hmm. We just went from learning all these different skills from these little side ventures that we had. And then we started like just applying everything together. Cause at first we were trying to do everything individually and it wasn't working. But then when we came together, and started like putting our skills together, we started seeing some success. And then we got to the point where Jalen was talking about where now like, now we have to, we grew from being the the workers to being the people running the actual business, like the actual numbers, the fundamentals, like how we, how we creating this plan to roll this out, how we doing this, how we doing that, that type of stuff. And even with me, like with some of the side hustles I was doing in school, so me and one of my frat brothers, we were selling shirts. At uh, one point, we were taking pre-orders and doing things like that. But I even remember times, it was one party, man. I pulled up with my truck in a barbecue pit, and I was selling, like, barbecue sandwiches after the party got over. Because once again, me and it, being in a fraternity, I knew when all the parties was popping. I knew what was about to be popping. But I was like, you know what? I'm not going to this party tonight. Let me go try to make some money. Let me go try to do something. Because I saw other entrepreneurs on campus doing the same thing. So I'm like, man, I need to go do this too. So I just feel like the spirit of entrepreneurship has always been within us, but just actually taking it to the next level. And now we're really just sharpening those skills and really just understanding what it takes to be successful at it. Well, I asked you this question for a, a specific purpose. I don't believe, and you guys touched on it so eloquently. I, I, I love where you went with your answers, both of you. I don't believe enough of us, human beings, 
entrepreneurs, just everybody. We don't trust the process. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, as entrepreneurs, you have to be willing to get back on the horse. And listening to you guys, you all had separate businesses at one point. But you could have easily said to yourself, look, it didn't work. I'm going back and getting into the job market. I'm going to find a job. I'm going to put my degree to use. But you didn't. You got back on the horse. You did what you're doing now. But all of the failures and all of the setbacks and the things that you guys learned while you were each acting individually with your own little businesses before, it has come to help you guys to grow Black Wealth Renaissance at a, at a you know, at an astounding rate. And it really sets you guys up to be, I think it was you, Jalen, who said, we're businessmen now. We're not just people who are workers. Every, like We think like businessmen. And before we close this out, I want you guys to touch on those two points. Number one, trust in the process. And, and this is something that I touch on, uh, you know, very, very frequently within my um, interviews, because I think it's important for people, even if you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, even if you don't know how something is going to turn out. It's important that you trust the process to know that there is no experience that is wasted. I, I don't believe that. As human beings, everything that we have gone through is for, it's to set us up for something in the future. And then secondly, once you get knocked down, if you're going to be successful, understand whoever's listening to this on podcast form or watching this on video, you're going to take these L's. We've talked about it again and again and again in this interview. But you can't be successful if you don't get back up on the horse. I'll throw that out to either one of you guys. Feel free to jump in wanna, and answer the question. I want to I wanna touch on that trust in the process, man, because I want to go back to whenever I was telling you all about the, me leaving my job for full-time entrepreneurship. That was a process within itself. Like, we had been working on BWR for a whole year at that point. We had started, we started seeing success. We started to see profits. We seeing all these things. And it's just like, okay, it's getting to this point where I feel like my job is taken away from my business. Like, so what am I going to do? So I sat down, I prayed about it. I, I really sat down, I asked, I was like, I need an answer. God, tell me what to do. So throughout just a different, like the next couple of weeks as I'm searching for answers, I'm going around. We went to this marketing conference and like I, I took off of work to go to this marketing conference. I was like, some spoke to me like, I need to go here. I'm in digital marketing. I need to go here. So I'm here, I'm there and I'm asking this guy, he's a digital marketer and he just so happens to pose the question, like asking us to ask questions. His whole thing was on like passion, purpose and profits. And I felt like it was really speaking to me because it's like, okay, this is where I'm at. I have a passion. I have a purpose. We have profits. But the profits aren't enough to sustain all four of us right now. What, what am I going to do about this? And I asked him a question, and he gave me an answer. Like, when, it, when would be the right time to quit? And he's like, it's never going to be a right time. If you at the point you at right now, you say where you are, you're going to have to go through the process. You're going to have to take some lumps. You're going to have to just figure it out. So that was like my motivation. And I went to just figure it out. And I had the emergency fund, but at the time I still didn't have another source of revenue immediately coming in. So it's like Black Wolf Renaissance, I'm still giving all my time here, but I'm not having a, a revenue source. So I'm like, man, what am I going to do? I'm in here. I'm eating through my emergency fund and as I, I say, I prayed about it. I'm very spiritual. You know, I, I, I spend my time, I think about it. And like, it didn't matter what it was, no matter how difficult the times got, whenever it seemed like shit was always at the lowest, it felt like a breakthrough came through. That's right. Every time. Every time. It, it didn't matter. Even whenever I was like, I felt like I was at my lowest. It's just like, 
it's like this one little pick me up will come and you'd be like, dang, like, oh, I'm better off than I was before. And like, it just, it continues to this day. Like I'm still in this process. I don't want anybody to think like we at the end of the tunnel. Like we trust in the process every day. Like we get up, we work. Once again, we still not taking no money out of BWR. We out here trying to secure bigger deals, trying to do all these different different things. Like it's a process. Is it seems overnight, it seems fast, it seems big, it seems quick, but it's still a process. Yeah, and just like with trust in the process too, like like he said, we're still on that road to where Black Wealth Renaissance will start paying us back. Right now, I feel like we're just sowing seeds of dedication into it. And we know that where we want it to be at, it'll be able to give us all the fruits that we need. But right now, we're just watering. We're watering that tree. We're watering that seed. And we're just really trying to make sure that whatever we do, it can be taken care of. Um, And with us not taking profits, we're hiring people in this process. So people are getting paid from this, but we're not getting paid from this. Like there's people, we're paying damn good. And I just be like, damn, man, that could be going (laughs) up. It's like, nah, they're going to make me more money Mm -hmm. than what I'm doing. So we have to understand that and we have to keep that in mind because I'm not going to lie. It's some days I'm just like, man, this shit really just like, it, it just weighs on you some days. You get you get up and you're just like, damn, I really ain't, I ain't do nothing. Like, I'm, and I'm going to speak to back whenever I was in Louisiana. I didn't have another re- uh, revenue source either. So what I was doing was I started cutting grass with my dad. And that wasn't even very profitable. It was a time where I was like, man, I'm trying to afford to put gas into the equipment so I can go make some more money. And like, it was really just, it was a time where I'm not going to lie, man. Like, I'm on a job. And my damn phone went off. Like, I couldn't even call people. I couldn't even call my dad to tell him, hey, I'm done with this one. Where you want me to meet me? Because I didn't have service. And I literally broke down and I cried in that yard. But I knew what my purpose was. And I knew that whatever it's going to be, this is part of the process. I had to come to here so I can get to where I need to go. It was some lesson that I had to learn that, I had to take what's on and I had to experience that pain. So once I do experience those ups, those, those peaks, I'll always remember where I came from. I don't, I'm not the person to say, I'm a flex on somebody. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Nah, like you said, I'm gonna be modest. I'm gonna wear whatever I want to wear. If I'm going to step out looking nice, I might do it once or twice, <laughs> but on the normal days, you're going to see me in a t-shirt, some shorts, uh, some jeans or whatever. And I'm just getting it. What's up guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.